Hey, let's talk about scale because using the scale tool means that you're ready to multiply all dimensions of an object or a shape by some number. So it's going to stay looking the way it does. It's just going to get larger or smaller. It's not going to get distorted, like taking a piece of Play-Doh and squishing into it and stretching it out. It's not going to do that. It's simply going to make it this much larger or this much smaller, but it's going to look the same. That's what scale does. And that's how we use the term scale. So orbit and pan over here to the side. The last tutorial when we dealt with the uh, rotate tool, we made these two boxes and I rotated them around in different positions. Well, let's use these now. I've rotated them back flat on the axis. Let's use these to experiment with the scale tool. So every form has a length, a width, a height, and a depth. It doesn't really matter what you call it as long as we're talking about the same thing. If I call this the length, fine. If I call this the width, fine. Height, length, width, height. Okay, we could call that depth, whatever. The scale tool can scale this entire object only if we select the entire object. So that means we have to select all of the dimensions, the length, the width, and the height, or the depth. So take your select tool and triple click this object. One, two, three. That's the quickest way to scale it without, it's the quickest way to select it without grabbing anything else in the environment. So if it's not touching anything else, I've only selected this box and the box turns blue. Cool. Now go to the scale tool and we're going to scale the thing that we selected. Boom. A yellow box, yellow edges with little green dots are surrounding this thing. This is what it's telling us. We are in control of every end point of every line edge and every midpoint of every line edge and every midpoint of every face. So midpoints distort, endpoints or corner points scale with the scale tool, okay? So if you wanna make this larger and you start grabbing an endpoint or a corner point, you need to look for uniform scale about opposite points. That means you're literally using the scale tool to scale this thing, it's gonna stay the same appearance. It's just going to be larger or smaller. So when you click it, left click it and pull it out, you're moving up from 1.0 because one times everything is the same. So you start your scale at one. Go larger, you'll see 1.2, 1.25, 1.3. Go up to like a 1.5 there and I let go. And it's 1.50 scale, which means that we have 50% more than we had where we started. It is 50% larger. Looks the same, same looking rectangular box, but it is 50% larger. It's like um, you have 50 more pennies than the 100 pennies you had when you started. It's 50% more. Okay. So control Z that, undo it and do it again. And this time scale it up. And right now the scale says 1.8 or something. Go ahead and type in um, 2.5. The scale should now be 2.5. Enter. Now it's two and a half times your starting size. And if this is moving a little slow for you, that's okay. I'm doing it for everybody. Um, but you don't have to scale it just larger. Watch what happens if you control Z that. And you were to scale it smaller than 1.0. It starts at 1.0 and here we go. I'm gonna left click and grab that and pull it down. Scale is 0 0.9996988786885. Scale it down to, you can let go. As long as it's knowing you're going smaller, you can then just type in the size you want. And you don't have to type zero. It understands just the decimal. So if I type point Five. Do you see 0.5 there? Yep. Enter. It goes to 0.5 of 1.0, which is the same thing as saying we started at 100 pennies and now we only have 50. It is half as big as it was, or it is 50% smaller. So that's using scale to go larger and smaller. But you can also use scale to distort and stretch something. And that's what I'll show you in the next tutorial.